Hey guys, it's Andrew Chasen here from Andrew Chasen Design, and uh, you might also know me as Incomitatum. I'm making a video. I haven't made a video in a long ass time, but I wanted to show you what the hell I've been working on, because uh, it's important to me. It's kind of amazing and life changing to me, and I want to give a shout out to the craftsman that he crafted. Uh, he's been a huge influence to me. Uh, just seeing his coolness and confidence and his charisma. And uh, saying, well, if he can do that, maybe I can do that. Anyway, let's get to the point. What the hell are we talking about today? I've been sculpting. I've been sculpting some amazing stuff. I'm going to reveal this in a quick little timeline of how I've built up to this point. So, I got this great stuff off of Amazon called Epoxy Sculpt comes in an A part and a B part. You might know about that. You take this, and that, and that part smells like Fritos. Fritos about to go bad or something. Like not pleasant, but not so bad you're gonna puke. You mix them together in equal parts, and uh, yeah, you get some clay, and uh, all of these are pieces that I made, not that thing, all of these are pieces that I made, I'll, sh I'll put a picture right here, and now we should be looking at the picture, and the picture will talk about the material science I did, I took, and when I got this clay, I laid out balls of it in a grid with different carving and shaping techniques that I knew I would want and I visited the clay at what, like 5 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, 2 hours, 4 hours, 6 hours later. Um, these little trinkets and goo and doodads are the result of that. Just testing before I went on to something bigger and better. And I'm really glad that I did that because I find this stuff is actually the easiest to work with your hands, even though my first instinct was to use gloves, and it's even, I mix it with gloves, but it's also uh, easier to use with uh, an hour and a half after you mix it, which is a little frustrating as an artist, because normally when you do a thing, you want to just jump in and get right to it. So then I tried making this. I tried making this from the helm, from the, from one of my, uh, like, Marvel Legend action figures. This is my work surface. And so I laid his head down and, uh, started working on, like, this little Mandalorian helmet. And I think that it actually, for being the, one of the first things that I sculpted, let me hold this here, came out all right. All that silver stuff inside is aluminum foil. I also learned more about how this additive process should work. This is a failure, but I learned some stuff. Also, I really like whittling on this material. That's one of my favorite parts. This was just a simple thing I made. Uh, extruded it with my fingers and then I whittled down the sides to make it look like a crystal. I'm gonna paint that up. Hopefully I'll paint it real nice and look like you know, like a real crystal from a distance. Anyway, let me show you a picture of my ravenous here. Here's how he's turning out. Tonight, I gotta do his bottom chin. I did his eyes right here. I like how I did his toenails. Real thin sheets of this stuff. Hopefully, the light catches it well. One of the reasons why I wanted a video is all the pictures I've taken have just been kind of static lighting, but here, you can see me rotate it. I've been lazy today. Later today, I get a lazy Susan. So that's this. It's going to be a gift for a friend. 
And uh, here's the mask that I'm working on for my wife. I'll show some progress pictures of the Ravenous. I'll show some progress pictures of this. I think it's turning out. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some pictures of each of these so that I can paint over them in Photoshop. And kind of test out what I want my paint palette to be. And, uh, yeah, the big grand finale. So far, this is my Halloween mask that I'm working on. It's meant to be smooth and cracked and porcelain and star-like on one side, and kind of tribal and deku mask, and uh, somewhere between a wolf and a bear on the other side. I got this pounded metal texture up here that I'm happy that it took real well. Give it a little focus. Tonight I'm going to put on another smooth sheet. It's holding on to this form quite well though. I bought a couple of blank masks. Here's the one that's for my wife. I just made some markings. I chiseled down the weird decoration that was on top. You can see they just kind of go right over each other. What saved my ass more than anything so far, actually, has been this thing. It was hard to figure out how to put it together because the picture didn't quite tell you what to do. But the fact that even just with one hand and a camera, I can grab some sheets. And, you know, they sell this mount for like a buck. They sell it with this cutter for like three bucks, spring for the cutter. It's really nice. Anyway, putting this down on top of a thing you want to work on top of, maybe taping it down sometimes. See, I've taped this elephant down in place. Uh, it's really saved my bacon more than a few times. So. The other thing I do is I, if I mix up too much material, I make sure that it does not get wasted. This is one of my first experiments, just a little snail. I want to make something, I want to give myself permission for it to turn out like crap. It isn't too bad for a little, it feels cold like stone. It has a nice texture to it. I like the hewn look after you whittle it down. This isn't so impressive, but it taught this one thing taught me a lot about the material. Letting me dremel and work on it. Having something that isn't a masterpiece that you're it's okay if you mess it up. And this guy isn't perfect, and he's gonna go in my lessons bucket. All of these here are a lesson that I learned. Sometimes, again, you mix too much of this material. At the three and four hour mark, it's kind of real hard to work with. Your working time is about an hour to three hours. And that's why I wait about an hour and a half, because then it's less tacky. It's somewhere between blue tack and bubble gum at that point. And so, having some leftover material, I thought, well, I'm just going to crank something out. I don't want it to go to waste. This isn't a masterpiece. It's all crappy and gross. And, you know, I could fill in these gaps. But again, this is something... It goes in here because it's one of my lessons learned. Last night I decided that I wanted to sprint. And uh, I think in art there you should try and work towards what's the smallest thing that I can do and still said, say that I did the thing. And again, I had too much leftover material. Uh, I drink these a lot. Iced tea with peach. Uh, just water packets. That way I can stay hydrated. And I had, and I've been keeping this around because it's good hard plastic. Uh, I mention this because uh, I cut it down and it's what I made the nose of, of this. It's what I bulked this up with. I cut it down in a few places and uh, cut it to where I could bend it. Uh, stuck newspaper down in it. Anything you can do to get the shape you want is not a cheat. So uh, I say all that because then I had these little lids. And I've got a lot of these containers and a lot of these lids because I drink a lot of peach water. And uh, 
again, I had leftover material. I'm like, well, how can I sprint? How can I do a thing? Say I did the thing, do a small version of it, and also grow. And so I decided to start making these guys. If I got leftover material, I decided I'll always make one of these. And that way, I get a little, I got a lot of these. They're quirky, they're fun, they let me practice organic shapes like lips and teeth and mouths and all that. They're a little creepy, but they're also similar. I mention this because it's a, it's a rubric. It's something that I can do every time. Can I make a mouth, a couple eyes, some other wrinkles? Each of these is gonna be unique and have character. I got a lot of the neighbor kids asking me to craft or sculpt them something now. It's like, well, this took relatively little material and hardly any time. This material is amazing. I love it because my least favorite part of Sculpey or Primo, what do they call that, polymer clay, is the fact that... Uh, in the part where you fire it, you can mess it up. I've done that a lot in the past. Granted, I was just a kid, but I don't really have the patience for that. This stuff, you mix two parts, you let it set up some. About an hour, you start working on it. Push it, twisty, mixy, mix it. Do whatever you want to it carve in some macro details as it drives, carves in some other fine details, and uh, carve in your macro details. You do a lot of carving. You go all over the same shapes quite a bit. It's There's a odd therapy in it. And then feeling that you made a thing. This is rock hard. It's cold. It feels like stone. Because uh, all you have to do is let it dry. Uh, it's dry in a good 12 hours, enough for you to carve and whittle on it. 24 hours later, uh, it's super rock hard. This dude needs a chin today. And uh, one of the reasons I'm throwing this video together real quick is uh, we're gonna go out, buy some paints, and I'm gonna paint all this up. And I want you to see kind of a before and after. But Thank you for sticking around and seeing this. Let me put all my awful creatures out here all at once. Here's what I've been doing with my life. It's been super rewarding. I hope that somebody finds value in the knowledge and wisdom I have to pass down. Thank you for watching my video. Thank you for being part of my day. Be blessed. Be well.